my point of view comes from you know as a content team of one in an economic downturn right like how should you think about content right now i feel like um i feel like that point of view is under discussed um i feel like it's easy to say like it's easy to talk about content strategy when you have all the resources when you work at shopify or hubspot or cxl and all these like places that that have the playbook and you know it's kind of easier to do that but what do you do when uh you're at a very early stage startup the marketing team is super lean you're the only content marketer like how should you think about approaching like the work you're doing i feel like that's the unique point of view that i can bring to the table and to that effect like i have things that uh i can talk about like going one level deeper is like you know one mental model i've thought about uh that relates to this is like content marketers when you're a team of one need to be like swiss army knives versus swords so like uh you need to you need to like be exceptional at like multiple channels and not just rely on only one because that is essential to sort of like creating a conversation in your niche uh and setting yourself up uh for the long term so the risk of only like focusing on one channel like a blog uh, as an early stage startup team of one is that you know you run the risk of not appealing to your customers very early on when you need to have multiple touch points that you can engage with them on so i learned this like when we we've recently started a newsletter and we found that you know there are prospects who actually want to engage with our content that don't come in through the blog they want to sit on the newsletter they want to read like multiple issues and then they might enter a sales conversation with us um and then you know experimenting with things like podcasts right and knowing that they might not work but just doing them anyway uh so i think that that sort of like framework of like being a swiss army knife and having these different tools and testing them out constantly is like something that i don't feel like content marketers like are keeping in mind right now i feel like content marketing has like i feel like is most associated with blog content just because that's the type of stuff that people are talking about most and i feel like as an early stage startup you should prioritize not just the blog but having like multiple different touch points and the other thing is that you know as a content team of one like i handle social as well and so social needs to be just much more you need to be much more familiar with it because it's less likely that your startup is going to hire a social media manager or going to hire an external like social media agency right so all having those like different skills and being familiar like in those different ways and having the the confidence and being comfortable with the ambiguity is i think those are like skills that you need to be prepared for if you want to sort of ride this down market and actually want to be em- employed in house uh, at a early stage startup because you know based on the layoffs we're seeing right it's usually the editors the freelance writers the content writers those are the guys in a content team that are going to be cut but the swiss army knives the guys who can bring like so much added value to the table are the guys who are most most likely to stay because it's a bigger risk for the company if you lose them the swiss army knife knife concept is interesting have have you seen people complain about this like i've seen on twitter and linkedin people saying like hey you're looking to hire a content marketer not a and then they'll list like 10 other jobs where it's like social podcast all these different things but that's true if you're at hubspot or something like that but in my mind like when i was at cxl i was all those things yeah. because the goal was not necessarily to write blog posts the goal was to grow the business yep. so it was basically like i had the tools at my disposal to do that and i could experiment with different channels and i never felt like i was being stretched beyond my i didn't look at it as like this is in my job description therefore this is all that i do so how would would you push back against the people who were like complaining about that oh you were hired for this but now you're expected to do all these different things or is that just like a, a startup necessity yeah so uh the people who are usually like having that conversation are also the people who talk about work life balance who talk about like uh who talk about like setting boundaries between uh you know your work and your personal life um and that's all well and good but the reality is like startup life is hard uh it's it's super difficult to generate traction um when you're an early stage company and especially like in the space that we're playing in we're like creating a category within retail tech so we're basically educating our audience um we're like educating different personas within those retail teams and so as a result there's a lot that needs to get done right and so uh as an early stage startup you just need to like play with the resources you have um and especially like in a down market you're not going to add headcount to the marketing team and a content marketing team you're going to be very judicious about where you allocate those resources and so the way i would think about it when people say okay like you have like a bunch of different roles within the content marketing job and you should hire like individual people for that i would say 
yeah, that's an ideal situation, right? But how many companies are actually going to go down that path? And if it's going to be just like a small percentage of them that actually do, then you need to be prepared for the majority of cases where that's not actually going to be the case. And you need to be realistic about, right, this is the situation. And so you need to be smart about setting up processes and being honest with your team about how much bandwidth you actually have. I think one of the things that I've learned like during my time here is uh, we have people internally who help with writing the thought leadership pieces, who help with creating the content. It's not just me. And so as a result, like we are able to create high quality content that uh, doesn't require me to reach out to the best freelance writer and, you know, wait, right? We can just like our CEO is writing stuff, our CEO, COO is writing stuff. And that's the kind of scrappy nature you just, that's the mindset you got to have at an early stage startup, uh, because that's essentially like how you make do with, you know, uh, slicing the pie in that sense. That, that attitude of scrappiness, I feel like has been underrated in the last couple of years. And I think that's probably a, a product of like inflated markets and just like a little bit of cushiony aspect to our work-life balance. Um, but I remember when I started out my career, I joined this company called Lawn Starter and they raised capital basically because like they hinged on the fact that their team was the scrappiest team of all time. And they totally were like everything we would do. It was like, how can we do this creatively? How can we do this without spending a bunch of capital? How, how, how can we accomplish this or at least test this channel without hiring a bunch of people before we actually prove it out? And I feel like I've brought that model of scrappiness through my career, albeit like when I was at HubSpot and Workato, like they didn't treat their company like that. So I, I do think it is something that you see a lot of the earlier stages because it's more of a survival mechanism. If you're exactly. not scrappy, if you hire a full-time employee for each of those positions, you're going to run out of money and then none of you are going to have positions at the end of that. Exactly. And I think, um, you know, it, it also comes down to exactly what you said about testing the channel before you hire the person, right? Because, you know, you can like, you can learn so much just from putting that MVP out there, which is what we're finding like with our podcast, with our newsletter, which are things that, you know, we've produced on an extremely scrappy level. Um, but just having those touch points and engaging with the audience in, in those different ways gives you so much more sort of like visibility into what people actually like resonate with and what they're actually looking for. And then that gives you more information to hire the right person for the role. Right. And, you know, like you want to be hiring people who uh, don't just fulfill the dimensions of the role, but can essentially like exponentially like um, add value to the table, right? Like you don't want someone to just like do one thing because at a startup, everyone's wearing multiple hats. So you want to make sure that that person has the skills necessary to basically like uh, take that role and basically expand it, grow it into something else beyond what you intend, right? And so you know, doing those like initial tests are extremely important for hiring the right people. Um, something I've thought a lot about and, and something that you've uh, treaded in this conversation already is that you're maybe not necessarily paid a lot because you're good at your skill set. I mean, I'm sure that helps, but you're paid a lot on the extent to which you're not replaceable. Right. And, and I, I would say that for myself, most of my individual skills, I'm pretty replaceable. Like, I think I was always good at experimentation, but other people can do experimentation I think like I have a unique voice, but like other people could write my blog posts. But like now if I like bring out like a meta skill, I got very good at doing that testing of channels and, and basically coming up with new ideas and scaling something from zero to one and building a playbook and then being able to identify talent to like basically take that over. That was what I did at HubSpot. That's what I'm doing at the company is, is basically like trying to figure things out on a sales model, on a marketing model, and then try to build a playbook. And, you know, if you can automate it, if you can outsource it, if you can hire somebody else. But like, I think that meta skill is much less, it's much harder to replace than like any specific skill that I'm kind of building up. Yeah, agreed. And that's actually like, uh, that ties into how we think about like our culture is extremely like async, um, like we're a fully like distributed company. And something that we prioritize is like learning and reflection for everything that we do. So like we've got, um, you know, we've got like company-wide protocols in place to make sure that everything is documented. We like, you know, obviously use Loom and, and things like that. But I think that sort of reflection is necessary to build that meta skill, right? Like having the, the strength to look at, okay, if an experiment doesn't go well, why isn't it going well? Troubleshooting like the gaps and then like actually like, asking the team for help to basically resource into that, right? So for example, like during the first quarter I was here, like I was writing most of the content so that like that constricted how much I was able to do outside the blog. And so I pointed this out to the team being like, hey, like if we want to have a like a larger surface area across different content channels, 
you need to give me the budget to get freelancers and and produce the top of funnel stuff so that that leaves me to produce like the more bottom of funnel more like stuff that you know is closer to the customer in that sense so you know i basically like made the case and was able to get the budget and so having the having the ability to point out like where you're feeling constricted where you need more resources and doing that in a way that leadership buys in is that's like that ties into that meta skill because if you can convince your team or leadership to give you the resources you need you'll essentially like be confined to a limited uh, space